Hello, everyone. Uh, hello from Cairo here, which is uh, around 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, today, first, I would like to thank Yasmin and Celine and all the Open Education team and Veronica for your uh, patience. And uh, today, I will be going to speak about the history of neglected Arabic graphic design, which is part of huge research and newly published book about the uh, um, history of Arabic graphic design. So um, I would just to, to clarify that this is only a very tiny selected topics from the from the content of the book because it's really huge research. It took us a long time, more than two years, and here we're going to actually have a preview of what is neglected uh, graphic design, and hopefully we can I can answer as much as possible from your question at the end of the of the class. So this is the topics that I, I chose so that I can actually talk about it today, which mostly we will talk about the graphic designers uh, uh, before graphic design as a term and a field itself. So who are those graphic designers that did work in this profession? And of course, speaking about the Arab world uh, before inventing the term graphic design. And then secondly, we'll go through the, the Arab design and modern, modernity. And third, which one of the very important topics, which is very uh, hot today, or I mean, last few days, it's actually Palestinian resistance and its designs. Uh, and then we will move to designers in the diaspora. And of course, again, we're mentioning that it's a pan-Arab thing. And then design and post-socialism. And lastly, the artist designs uh, and rebirth of Arab designs. So, um, when, when we our start, as I mentioned before, graphic designers before graphic design. And um, before we jump into, uh, uh, because the, the book or the research takes to us from the 1900 until uh, 1999, we cannot neglect uh, the, the importance and the effect of actually the Arabic calligraphy through time, space, and material. So uh, from, from all Islamic period, there is plenty of uh, um, resources which is related to uh, Arabic calligraphic styles, which some of, of them that you can see now on the screen, which is the folio from the early, from left to right, the folio from early Kufic style. And then you have also the Eastern Kufic style, which is same family, but it's a little bit different in the middle. And the, the, the first one, it's actually in North Africa, which is uh, uh, mostly in, in Egypt. And then the second one, which is the, uh, uh, the, from, from Iran. And then thirdly, which is again, one of the other uh, calligraphic styles in Arabic language is the Nesq, and that's from the 16th century. And again, you can see the differences and the variety in terms of calligraphic style, but not only, you can see also the decorative elements used in the layout, how they use color and, and the, illustrations to create what we call today editorial design. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with, with this, but just showing you some example of what we can call it nowadays as information design. Again, those are uh, uh, manuscripts from uh, Islamic periods. Uh, for example, the one to the left side is the anatomy of a horse from the 15th century in Egypt. And you can see again the way how text and image work together harmoniously in, in a beautiful way. Uh, and secondly, is, is this the, uh, um, the eye, according to the uh, Hunyan Ibn Ishaq, which is 12th century, it's the anatomy of the eye itself. And again, see the relationship between image and text and so on. And lastly, is the Arabic machine manuscripts from the 16th to 19th century. And again, a beautiful way of illustrating information as we call it today, data visualization or information design. Um, then let's talk about the designers. So. When we started our research, Bahia uh, Shahab, the, the co-author of, of the book and my friend, that uh, to look at the first or the early designers from the Arab world, we started off seeing that, that the calligraphers and uh, people working in the printing press, they are the early uh, designers of, in, in, in this profession. So uh, some of the, the, the early names, um, let me give you a little bit of a brief about Arabic calligraphy. Arabic calligraphy was always used in a very holy and sacred context. So you can see always holy books, not just only Quran or the Bible or the Old Testament, but it's the Torah. They're all in, in, in used in, in the holy text and then moved quickly from the, from the holy text to more like the royal court, like uh, all the khalifas or uh, kings and, and princes and so on. They are all used Arabic calligraphy in, in that context. It was not yet 
communicated with the masses. It was not yet that popular, or I would say actually even vernacular. Uh, but it then few calligraphers from the early century they started to take this approach. So some of the 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 the, the, the example from the early calligraphers that we call them the early designers, like for the left to right, that's Al, al Jamia Al Islamiya, which means the the, the Islamic University uh, newspaper, and you can see a beautiful uh, uh, Kufic style. And then uh, to the left and to the uh, to the uh, down left is the King Faru of Egypt, uh, calligraphic monograms designed by Mustafa Big Gazlan. So it's every king uh, uh, in Egypt would having uh, uh, we we call it uh, a monogram, which is kind of a logo designed with his name. And that was mostly for most of of, uh, of the kings in in the Arab world. And uh, as well, of course, the Khalifa as well. We have the Togra, which is another calligraphic style, which is, uh, it's a kind of a signature designed by a calligrapher for the Khalifa himself. And then there's some of the covers of uh, books, and you can see the variety of the calligraphic style, which is Egyptian matters using uh, Nasr style, and then the name of the author with, uh, with, with uh, Rika, it's a different casual, let's say simplified way. And then to the, uh, to the right, that's another uh, book cover design. Um, one of the early, again, uh, beautifully uh, uh, done uh, designs by uh, Yusuf Ahmed, which is one of the early uh, inventor of the Kufic style. So it's the, the, the left side, that's a book about the development, the, the, the developed writings of Kufic style. And then uh, to the right side, that's right left is actually Palestine. It's a, it's a newspaper designed by Yusuf Ahmed as well, which was the, uh, the, the master of the Kufic style in Egypt. And uh, to the uh, right uh, top is actually a mix between two beautiful uh, calligraphic style. And the top left is actually a Kufic by Yusuf Ahmed and uh, in the middle, Alhamdulillah, al Islam is by Sayyid Ibrahim, which we'll talk about him now. Um, um, so I chose only two uh, calligraphers from Egypt and one from Algeria which I said that those are the ones they actually started communicating with the masses in the, early, in the beginning of the century. So firstly is uh, Muhammad Husni al-Baba, which is, uh, that's his business card and that's his personal image. And beautifully, again, he designed uh, a monogram for the King Farouk the first, which you can see in the top of proudly adding it to his business card that he's the designer of the monogram of the King Farouk. And that's his name under that. So Muhammad Husni al-Baba is, is one of the, calligraphers that they talk designed to really, again, as I mentioned, vernacular, communicating with the masses, making really affordable, if I would say so. So plenty of book cover designs, very easy and, and I would say cheap in terms of, of uh, price as well, inserts in magazines and newspapers, such as the one in the, in the left side. And that's a book cover, which is the guide of the uh, Giza pyramids and the Egyptian museum. And uh, the variation of calligraphic style is written by Muhammad Hosni al -Baba. Secondly, which I just mentioned before, is Sayyid Ibrahim, and he, he, they call him the Dean of Arabic Calligraphy in Egypt and the Arab world. He's actually, he was a, a, a professor of calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy at the American University in Cairo. He was also a poet, and uh, he's a founder of Apollo magazine. It's for literature, Arabic literature. So Sayyid Ibrahim, again, he is this, I would say, god of Arabic calligraphy, that he told calligraphy from this uh, loyal, to, to the vernacular, to the masses. And I'll show you some of the beautiful examples of, of, of Said Ibrahim. For the ones from come from the Arab world, they will know the names actually on my screen. So this is business cards for Ahmed from uh, uh, top left is Nagib Rahani, a very famous ac uh, actor and also a founder of a theater company. To uh, left down is Yom Said film uh, title, which is like, a, uh, it was also, very, again, a way of communicating with the masses by writing beautiful film titles in, in, uh, in Arabic calligraphy. Uh, to the middle down, Shukurel, one of the very famous Egyptian department store, that's the logo. And then Um Kulthum and Ahmed, she's a uh, singer, Ahmed Shawi Beg is a, a, a poet. So making logos and business cards for celebrities in Egypt make it actually an easy way to communicate with the masses. And that's why Said Ibrahim have a very important role of communicating with, uh, with the people. Uh, the famous newspapers in Egypt, the masthead of Al-Ahram, top, top right, 
and uh, um, again, Muster newspaper, Palestine newspaper, um, uh, that's those all actually designed by um, Said Ibrahim. So Al Aram, it's the pyramids, Muster, it's Egypt, Palestine, it's Palestine. Uh, also beautifully, if you have been in Cairo, visiting downtown Cairo, uh, the district of the Malik, you will see a beautiful Thulus style, which is for the street signs by Said Ibrahim as well. And then I will jump from here and the street signs of Egypt by Said Ibrahim to a very important similar role in Algeria, which is Omar Rassin. He's an artist, a designer, uh, a calligrapher. And also, again, he played a very important role of designing uh, the signage and also taking calligraphy to another level in Algeria. So those are some of the work of uh, uh, Omar Rasim to the, from left to right. That's the Bible. And you can see the different calligraphic style from Egypt and using Thuluth and Diwani and, 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 and Kufic styles. And then you see in, in, um, in, in, in Morocco or North Africa, which is, uh, again, where the, the we call it the Maghrib countries, which include Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and, and, and Libya, that you can see the different style of the, of the Bible, uh, which is again, uh, Kufi al-Maghribi, which that's the style he uses. Also the masthead of Dhul Faqar, that's a, a design, and actually the illustration itself, but also by um, Omar Rasim, and the first Algerian newspaper, Al Jazair, which is Algeria, uh, first uh, Arabic speaking, Arabic, sorry, Arabic, Algerian uh, newspaper, Al Jazeera. And those some of the advertisements by uh, Omar Rasim, uh, cigarettes, uh, the Shell company, and uh, some others. And here, I just what I wanted to show you is the street signs in, in the street of Algeria, which you can see the differences between the Philos in Egypt and the Kufi Maghribi in, in, in Algeria. Lastly, I will just mentioning this Khodere uh, Bursaidi, that's an Egyptian calligrapher, which is the one who take it to the next step. And the, uh, we call him here the last of this golden generation, uh, but he's still alive, he's still working beautifully for uh, the classical calligraphic artworks, like I would say, as the art of calligraphy, but also make mass beautiful designs from typefaces, uh, uh, littering, and also uh, some other designs. Khodel Saidi was born in 1942 in Egypt, and uh, he's the one lived with those great names I mentioned before and many others, but it's still at the moment he uh, conveyed these messages to young designers and actually type designers. So those some of the once from the generation of the uh, 80s and 90s in, in the Arab world, they will know exactly what's in the screen now. So, uh, which is one moment, please. Shahid uh, Wadmoua, a beautiful TV series in Egypt. So, that's all, all working for TV. So, all the TVs, um, TV in Egypt, and uh, which mostly distributed to the other countries in the Arab world, 80s and 90s, was all written by Mossad Khodr al Saidi. That's why, again, it's the last of this generation beautifully communicated with the masses using them, showing the importance of the Arabic uh, calligraphy. And another part which we'll jump quickly, um, which is um, cinema. So if you talk about vernacular design, communicating with the masses, who's the first designers designed before the word graphic design, then we will talk about cinema. And if you're familiar with the the film industry in the Arab world, you will know that Egypt was one of the early uh, countries that developed actually the industry of cinema in, in late 20s and early 30s. So um, I will not talk about the history of Egyptian cinema, but as I will just talk about the history of the design of the uh, Egyptian cinema posters. So I will break it down to some of the very important elements. If you can see the, the usage of Arabic script writing in, 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 in film posters, you will see from the uh, uh, 30s that you have uh, from left to right, uh, Sayyida Aziz Amin, which is the name of, of, the, of the actress, which is a very early, it was 1933, I think that was the second or third Egyptian movie. And you can see the, the very classical style, but if you jump to the next one, you will see uh, a simplified liqa, which is one of the very casual uh, simplified uh, about uh, um, uh, it's called the Azima, the film poster uh, that's designed by Muhammad Abdul Aziz. And then uh, the third one, which is a little bit inspired by the Greek Italian uh, movie poster designers or 
artists, which you, they, you see the colors, the graphical treatment, uh, how it's dealt with the design. And that's a late uh, style, which was Mawad uh, al-Asha. It's, an, it's um, a date for, for dinner by Hassan Mazhar. Again, that's just to show you the diversity of calligraphic style which you use in, on uh, film posters. Again, beautiful, different, developed style, which is, you see the first one, it's just typical classical calligraphy. He is more littering style. And uh, you can see the from, from left to right, uh, that was a very famous uh, typeface uh, by the 80s, which normally was used actually for uh, newspaper headlines. But some of the artists, uh, because they're mostly called the artists in Egypt, uh, Anwar uh, Ali, he used it for film posters. And he uses very high skill drawing and painting skills, but also use it with uh, typefaces. Again, the second is this, the same designer, same uh, calligraphic style or lettering style. And then uh, also the, the, the thief first designer for him. And the fourth, it's by Abdel Al, an artist and, and a comic art, art actually that he designed using the same calligraphic style based on the Nasr uh, for uh, film posters. Historical movies, as you can see, Kufik and the way of illustrations, the compositions, the colors. So those are um, um, famous figures in the Islamic history, Khalid ibn al-Walid. And then also uh, Saladin, which is in Arabic, it's Salah al -Din by uh, director Yusuf Shaheen. Those are historical movies that you can see from the calligraphic style, plus the color mode and the way of illustration give you this sense of, of, of history. Some other way of um, uh, freestyling, let's say lettering, a more ex 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 expressive way of using lettering, which is uh, from left to right night train, and you see the effect of speed on uh, the, the name of the movie. Uh, second one is fear, al khuf. Again, the effect of fear uh, in, in, in the lettering style. And then yom uh, hazagiddan, which is um, a very hot day. And you can see like at the spicy, like chili, uh, the way how they make the lettering in Arabic. Um, illustrations, and, and again, I mentioned that there is different ways of making illustrations. I'm talking about Egyptian cinema, uh, mostly because it was the early and the most distributed uh, films among the whole Ar the Arab world. So here you see the very classical uh, um, illustration style and uh, by different artists actually even were just only commissioned to illustrate for the film, but the, who do it, another artist or calligrapher who does the lettering for it. So those are uh, four different style. And then another style which mix between illustration and photography. And you can see uh, the bus driver, so I to be and you can see beautiful composition in the photography, but using also illustrations. Again, um, second one, um, mid-year holidays. Uh, it's uh, uh, again using uh, hand color style for the photography, but also with illustration in the background. And one of my beautiful uh, movies as well, uh, designs, um, uh, um, Al Harif, which is actually uh, a translation in English, it's the striker. Um, uh, strike player and if the, the if you really play football or like soccer in the US that you would know exactly who's a striker but again a beautiful way of mixing between uh, uh, illustration we have a beautiful uh, graphical treatment and a photograph and the font for the same uh, actor also caricature and comic style was also very common and popular in, in Egypt so you see that the left side it's a caricature or a caricature style um, the second one, similarly, an illustration by a famous artist, Ihab Shakir, and then Mustafa Hussain in the third one. So that was also very common for comic uh, or the comedian movies to have uh, a caricature or comic style. And then there is um, something in the, in the cinema was called press book. Press book is actually for the people familiar with this term is that is the catalog, is the flyer or the push word that you have it when you go for the film premiere. It's not, not necessary to be designed by the same artist or designer for the poster. It's just only a commission to have like a small booklet to show about all the, the cast of the movie, all the actor, all the people behind the scenes. So it gives you a little bit more information. And normally, again, it was commissioned by an, for an, from another designer. So here's what I really interesting about those two, because that's one of our pioneer graphic designers in, in Egypt and Arab world, Abdel Salam Sharif. But you can see as well here, the, the way of lettering. So Leila Mumtira, which is a rainy night, it's a beautiful way 
of uh, making a littering style at the er uh, at, um, early 30s. So you can imagine in the 30s when you have this classical, beautiful calligraphic style, and again, a designer coming with this beautiful way of uh, experimentation in, in Arab the, the holy Arabic styles and do beautiful littering about for, for movies. The second one is, is Ma'allim Bahbah. Bahbah is the name and Ma'allim is the master Bahbah. Again, you see the word Ma'allim, which is the master and the name Bahbah around the portraits of, of the, uh, the, the stars of the movie. Uh, for the same uh, designer, Abdel Salam Sharif, it's in a sketch and the final uh, cover for the, the press book, Saad al um, That's so again uh, the, for the same design. A beautiful way again of, of littering, illustration, and also mix between illustration and photography for uh, different designers for the covers of the press book. And that's one I like as well. It's a, a pride of the Nile. And you can see uh, the, the, the way how they wanted to illustrate the waves of the Nile or the background, having uh, the Arabic lettering with a lotus flower. And you see the waves and then the Latin, which is the English, the name of the, of the, uh, of the movie, Bride of the Nile. And that's the last one by Munir Kanaan, Sitt al uh, uh, Again, a beautiful way of uh, uh, colored photography with mixed with illustration, uh, again, using calligraphic style that gives a little bit of history or uh, the fantasy of the Orient and even the Latin typeface as well, trying to match uh, uh, the Arabic style. So secondly, we will move uh, to Arab design and modernity. And here I will start to highlight pioneer graphic designers from the Arab world, which is related to the topic. So firstly, we have Abdel Salam Sharif, who was born in, in the south of Egypt, Minya, in 1910. And Abdel Salam Sharif is the first name that we found through our research from Egypt and the Arab world that he took this uh, profession from the foreign community that have been working in Egypt. If you remember, I mentioned before that there was Greeks and Italians. Uh, that they work in the industry of like uh, uh, magazine, newspaper publishing, as well as the cinema. So Abdel Salam Sharif, one of the first Arab slash Egyptian names that they work in this industry. So he was a, an artist, a designer, uh, and as well, he was an art critic. He was a, an, an exhibition designer. He was uh, actually, he did act himself. He did set design for cinema. He was um, an educator. He worked in the uh, the, the School of Fine Art in Cairo, but also we founded the first uh, Art Criticism Institute in, in Cairo in, in the 50s. So those are some of the um, magazine covers by Abdel Salam Sharif, which is mixed between his beautiful uh, way of illustration, making uh, uh, the, uh, a caricature mix between realism and caricature, very linear, very decent and delicate, and even the signature is part of his illustrations. You can see in here and there. And, and uh, so those are three covers for Nadea Haria, which is the call for freedom. That's the name of, of the magazine. And uh, that's the first issue to the uh, right side. Some other covers for uh, book cover designs for uh, Salam Sharif, one of the Saad Zaglul, one of the main figures in Egypt in 1919. And uh, again, you can imagine this in the, in the 30s and 40s designs with using uh, graphical treatment, monochromatic uh, treatment for a, a photograph for the portrait of Saad Zaghloul, plus the background showing uh, people from the revolution of 1919. And uh, actually that's the Cairo University when it started the 1919 event in, in Cairo. And secondly, a beautiful book about the Egyptian woman it's called al Masriya, which is from the pharaohs until today by a very famous, uh, a leader, a female leader, uh, author Duria uh, Shafi. And then again, thirdly, is the book cover design for Anil, which is the Nile. You see again the treatment for uh, the, the waves of the Nile. You see the, uh, the goddess of the Nile and some of the uh, illustrations from the modern time of, of Cairo as well. Uh, the fourth is about Russia, and you can see here Lenin and Stalin and, and uh, Marx as part of the. Uh, illustration, but again, it's the color treatment, the way he make the composition, the way he do the beautiful lettering for the word Russia, and I'm talking about 30s and 40s. So uh, extremely avant-garde of way of dealing with Arabic uh, lettering and illustrations. 
those are some other book uh, cover designs. Uh, and beautifully here, the way of uh, making lettering of the name of uh, uh, Xiang uh, Kishiak, which is a uh, book cover design, but trying to make a treatment of Arabic letters like Chinese uh, characters from, and to make it also, also readable from top to down. And uh, the one to the fourth to, 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 the, to the right, which is Khalid of Dimna, which is a beautiful illustration of animals and flowers. And this book in, in particular have a very uh, interesting story that uh, when he was working with Muhammad al-Ma'allim, uh, one of the early publishers in Egypt that he gave them the whole freedom to experiment the material. So he started using gold and he started using this uh, uh, vibrant colors in his designs and experiment with also printing on leather. And he actually took his designs to a completely different dimension of how he uh, um, make uh, designs and use production as part of his design uh, methodology. The second name of, of this uh, category is Hissem Bikar, uh, one of, the, again, the artists, illustrators, and also art critic in Egypt, and uh, uh, was born in Alexandria. And uh, Bikar was known for, he designed more like a thousand book cover design. From, from mostly late 40s and early 50s, and those some uh, beautiful cover designs from um, the 50s for Bikari, which was very known for his very elegant illustrations, and the way, especially for human figures, and also very uh, uh, linear um, uh, um, lettering style. So those some of, of, of his covers, and again, we have here a beautiful uh, uh, illustration about this uh, so that, about that, this black I uh, uh, which I loved, which is talking about Africa. And another one that's actually his drawing and uh, writing uh, uh, spoken images, Sowa Nautika, uh, Song for Love. Again, you see so much, he was a big fan of, of actually the continent Africa, especially Nubia and the civilization of the south of Egypt. And uh, even it was actually commissioned to, to, to paint 50 beautiful artworks in Nubia. But you can see in the, the customs, the way how people are dressed in Nubia, he used it several times in his uh, book cover design. Also, he was um, uh, um, famous of also designing, so that the one, if you know Nasser, uh, 1952, the, the second Egyptian president. And uh, so that's a, a beautiful book part of the propaganda of, of that time of, uh, and the name of the book is actually Baba Nasser, sorry, Baba Gamal, which is the first name of Nasser, his name is Gamal Abdel Nasser, which gave the, the, this fatherhood uh, way of the, the, our leader, the president is our father. So that was part of an educational book uh, that uh, part of the propaganda at that time. The book for the, the first and second from left to right is actually the days, or I am, it's the memoir of the Egyptian uh, uh, philosopher and, and author, poet is uh, Taha Hussein. So it's actually one of the early designs for uh, Bikar uh, and as well in, in bilingual in English and, and Arabic. Uh, those are some uh, covers for Hussein Bikar. Again, illustration and the way he's doing the lettering. Uh, 1000 Night and Night, uh, the first illustrated uh, 1000 Night and Night in Egypt. It was illustrated uh, by Hassan Bikar. It's a 20 volume, uh, beautifully uh, uh, published in Egypt here. Sindbad, one of the early comic magazines in, in Egypt. And uh, uh, Sindbad by itself was a school for all artists and designers from the Arab world. The way how he did the illustration, the lettering, designing the layout, it was an, an, a school by itself. So, it was part of our uh, interviews with everyone we meet from the Arab world designers. He said like, yes, I, if I wasn't educated in Egypt, I was educated by Hassan Bikar because I was reading and try to imitate his drawings in, in Sindbad when, when they were really young. And Sindbad was very famous in the 50s until um, the 70s. Also, uh, lots and lots of beautiful uh, uh, children books illustrations. So those some of the beautiful illustration for children. Also, the lettering style is also very famous for Bikar. And he did work for uh, Al Akhbar, which is a news. It's an institution for um, magazine newspapers in Egypt. A lot working with uh, 
I would say socialism, but you can see the, the cover of the magazine, which is imitating a little bit the, uh, the Soviet Union way of illustration. And the other one is actually, it's a map of the Arab world by uh, Hassan Bikar using the customs from, from the Arab world uh, to show the diversity in, in, in culture. He was commissioned to uh, paint Abu Simbel temples in Egypt, to be in Egypt to see Abu Simbel, you can also see it in the Egyptian um, pound. And so they were, they, you can see they, see that they are in the color of stones, but actually he was commissioned to paint them with the original colors, with the assumption that they were all colors. So he did actually, I think 20 paintings to show the original colors of, of Abu Simbel temples in, in, in Egypt. Uh, second generation, I think it should be a little bit quick. Uh, second generation, um, Abdul Ghani Abdul Anin, also from one of the very important schools, which schools not necessarily a school as a, a fine art school or, or, or applied art school, but it's a school, uh, as most of the people, they work in this profession, as I mentioned before, they work, they come from newspapers and magazine and publishing industry. So one of the very important magazines in Egypt called Rose al Yusuf, which was founded in the 20s and 30s. And um, they call it the younger sister, Sabah al Khair, which means good morning. And uh, um, those were actually a school for artists and designers. So the, the, the chief editors of those, those um, two magazines, they were so much um, um, uh, interested of going to the fine art school and look at the young fresh graduates and hire them to learn and to draw and to design the layout of the magazine. So if you have the chance to see the magazine from the 20s until I think 90s, there's so much focus on illustrations, so much focus on, on drawings and, and uh, the, always a very experimental avant-garde uh, layout, breaking all rules, breaking all grids. And Abdul Ghani Abul one of the one of the very uh, important names of, of, of this newspaper. So he designs actually the logo for the Rosal Yusuf, left uh, uh, to right. Also, Kitab al Gumhreya, another uh, institution, Sabah al Khair, the Good Morning, the one in the middle. And that's the magazine I was just speaking about. That's some of his illustrations. Uh, it's editorial used actually on, on designs. He uh, drew with his beautiful style the covers of Sabah al Khair, the Good Morning magazine. Also a cover for uh, uh, landscapes from Nubia to the right, which is again, you see the custom of the Nubian, Nubians of Egypt, uh, how they, they actually wear the uh, costume. So that's a, a book documenting 35 years of, of, uh, um, of Nubia. And that's a, a, a sketch of actually a book cover design for Egypt, not for Abdel Nasser. Abdel Nasser is Nasser again for one of the famous authors, Muhammad Hassan Haikal. So you can see the sketch to the right side, but the final book to the left side. Same generation, same school, Hassan Fouad, um, a, rev a revolutionary uh, designer and artist. And until he quit actually doing design, and then he focused on screen writings and and writing for cinema mostly. And one of the founding magazine that he was jailed because of that magazine cover to the left side, which is the first issue of Al Tahrir Liberations magazine, because he showed the Egyptian and death customs in the uh, late 40s. So he was jailed because of, of that photograph. And he founded one of the early magazines for uh, uh, art in, in Egypt. And that's the logo of uh, the magazine Al Rad, which is tomorrow. Uh, and the, with the slogan Al Fan Fi Sabil Haya, which is art for life, and that's the cover of the first ish, issue of uh, Al Ghad magazine. Also, a lot of lettering for the magazine and newspapers uh, that he worked with. So those some beautiful lettering, uh, actually scanned from a beautiful book about uh, about him from Mohideen Labad, which I will talk about him later today. During the time when he was in jail, he did a lot of illustrations and that he used it later for designs, such as those uh, to the right side, you can see the illustration to the left side, that's the book cover design that he used. Again, another uh, illustration for the time of the jail in the 50s and um, used also for another cover design. Those are a beautiful uh, cover design based on illustration, which is, you see, uh, clearly his style of uh, using a way of illustrating stuff like children's drawings and again 
uh, using littering style as handwriting. And that was part even from his artistic expression. A beautiful book to the right, Lanna Khuna Palestine, which will never portray Palestine. And uh, it's a poetry and it's a beautiful way of showing again, his illustration, newspapers, headlines, and uh, with blood, with red color, will never betray Palestine. So since we spoke about Palestine, I will jump quickly to the Palestinian resistance and its designs. And that's a whole new world of designs. And there is a beautiful archive online, it's called uh, Palestinian Poster Archive. You would see, I think if I'm not mistaken, more than 10,000 posters, oh, sorry, more than 10,000 designs about Palestine uh, uh, online. And um, I will go through very quickly about some of the major events about the Palestinian, from the Palestinian resistance and who are the most, I will not say the most, who some of the uh, designers and artists they designed for Palestinian um, uh, resistance. And as you know, Palestine is not just only a case or a cause for Palestine as it's more a cause for the whole Arab world. So that's a pan-Arab uh, cause and you can see beautifully uh, by Abdurrahman al-Mizian, a beautiful, uh, which is, you will see it later on, many of the designs are actually about uh, fighting uh, the Israeli occupation, but at the same time having the, the dove, which is the symbol of peace. So you find always a mix in most of the posters between the dove and the machine gun, which is that we will five until we reach peace. And uh, so that's a beautiful illustration in the 70s by Abdurrahman al-Mizian. And you can see again the dove as part of the, of the elements of the design, but also you can see the way as the, the camera shutter, shutter camera between the legs, which is like, we will see you, we will capture what you are doing, we will fight until we get peace. And then you have, uh, we will be victorious, uh, San Antasal, one of the uh, posters by the, the, one of the really, um, I would say, father of, uh, Palestinian design, Ismail Shamut, and the father of the Palestinian uh, uh, artist. Um, he was one of the early uh, designer, the designers that actually contributed to the Palestinian cause. And you can see here, um, uh, Sarham Bishar from Lift is poster designed by Ismail Shamut as well, who is one of the uh, uh, important figures from uh, the, the liberation uh, Palestinian Liberation Organization, as well, uh, the one into the middle by Nazi Naba Syrian uh, uh, artists and designers for the movement uh, Fatah and political party as well. And you can see again the dove and the gun uh, and the sun in the background. So uh, as the message is, is clear, similarly, you see the 10th anniversary of PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, poster designed by uh, um, the, the Syrian designer, um, uh, apologies, but, uh, I, I just missed the name, uh, Yusuf Abdilki. Um, so, uh, which is again, beautifully illustrated and you can see realism style. I mean, both Nadir Naba Ismail, actually three of them, Nadir Naba Ismail Shamut or uh, uh, Yusuf Abdilki, they are beautiful artists, mostly they're using a very figurative way of making illustration and you can see Clearly here, that's the way how they also designed the posters. Um, two different designs. The first one to the left is actually by uh, artist and, and designer and historian Hosni Adwan, which also published a beautiful book about a uh, Palestinian poster. And I think that was part of his uh, PhD dissertation, which called uh, Peace Must Be, sorry, Peace Must Be Different Armed. And uh, the logo design, which is this dove in the background, which was also used in behind President uh, uh, Arafat in the United Nations, which is designed by Kamal Bulata, and uh, which is used many other uh, Palestinian uh, uh, publications. And here to the right side, Egyptian designer uh, Helmut Tuni, which is again with the referral, with the referral, we will be we will free Palestine. And again, you see the rifle, you see the machine gun, but you see at the same time, you see the dove. Um, uh, another uh, way of like uh, uh, presenting the, the, the Palestinian resistance that you can see here is uh, flame, which is, shows hope and hold for the, the movement of the political party Fatah, 
you can see here um, uh, evolution until victory. Those are three different posters. They show uh, this idea. And um, again, another poster that's related to the freedom of the prisoners in the prison of occupying territories, which is uh, to the left side. And then uh, as well, you have, um, again, for the same designer in the middle for Yusuf Abdelki in 1981, uh, for the for to liberate the prisoners in the uh, of the uh, occupied uh, 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 territories, and then uh, for from from Palestine, sorry, from Egypt by Hemetouni to Syria by um, Yusuf Abdelki to Morocco by Mohammed Al Malehi, showing uh, a beautiful design for uh, Palestine. That's the word in Kufic style in the top, and here you can see a child screaming with the riffle in his hand. Um, another very important element, which is the, the, the map of Palestine and the Palestinian Kufiya. So you can see here um, uh, the, the, the Palestinian Martyr Day, uh, which is again showing uh, the map of Palestine and uh, written the text here about the Bayad Nani Sharif. As well, you can see the map and the Kufiya and also the beautiful uh, Palestinian uh, patterns, uh, which is part of the folk art of Palestine that was a designer by Palestinian designer Kamal Kaber, 1982, and uh, Adnan Shalib again with Kufiya as part of the, the map of Palestine and uh, the text or the, the slogan down all the riffle for the freedom of Palestine and here by Hosni Adwan. Uh, peace for Palestinian. Uh, again, you show the map breaking the chain and having the door for the Palestinian liberation organization. As most of you can see them now in the whole media by the, the amazing uh, Burhan Karakutli, which is one of the, actually the Palestinian, uh, sorry, the Syrian uh, known as Palestinian designers. Uh, Burhan Kakutli was in exile in, in, in Germany all his life until he passed away in 2013. So he was, because of the way how he uh, illustrated the, the Palestinian cause, the, the type of illustrations, the beautifully drawing the customs, the, the, the features, the, 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 again, the idea of the riffle, all um, the way, even the way how he's doing the littering is, is beautifully illustrating the culture the, the, of that area. And uh, you can see and it was actually his poster was, was used in different occasions around the world. So in solidarity with uh, Palestine, the one to the middle, um, victorious until, the, uh, until victory in, in, um, in the one on the left side. Uh, Palestine lives, Ashta Saura Palestine, you see the Palestinian lady with the Palestinian customs, the rifle in her back, and um, again, um, Beautiful work by Burhan Kakutli. Um, so, to the, uh, again, different designs for Burhan Kakutli. You can see here uh, Israeli po Israel, uh, poster design by Burhan Kakutli in 1977, showing the Israeli soldiers uh, prisoning uh, a, a Palestinian man, as well as Kotsulana and Nasulana, um, Jerusalem for us, victory, uh, Jerusalem is ours, and um, Nasulana victory is ours again by Burhan Kotli showing the beautiful illustration of Jerusalem. And this, the third one to the right is actually in solidarity was the Me Mexican uh, revolution at that time. And, and you can see uh, the uh, uh, Zabata, which is the uh, with Abdel Qadr Husseini, the hero from the Mexican revolution and the hero from the Palestinian uh, revolution. Um, again, we move forward to different designs, which is related again to Palestinian evolution. I think it should move a little bit faster. Um, Palestine, uh, a beautiful stamp design by uh, Egyptian Mohideen Labad, again, and the book cover design about the Palestinian stamps. Uh, the mix, uh, it's showing the Nazi and uh, the, the Israeli uh, David um, star. Um, that's a design by uh, Abdel Qadr and Oud, very controversial uh, design. Uh, it is really an equal aggression. Again, that's another um, design by Abdel Qadr and Oud. One of the very important magazines is the Shu'um Filistinia, which is uh, 
uh, Palestinian matters, and they will commission every edition uh, and an artist from the Arab world to um, design. So the first is Ma'il Shamoud, the second is Mona Sahnawi uh, from Lebanon, the third is Kamal Bulada from Palestine, the fourth is Mohammed Shaba from uh, Morocco. Uh, the day of Al Karama, the day of dignity. Um, one of the major events uh, for Palestinian, you can see here the Hosni Nadwan from the left 1975, Emil Menem 1977 from Lebanon, uh, Adnan Sharif from Palestine, and uh, also um, Adnan Sharif for another poster for the Day of, of, uh, of Dignity. The, the Day of the Land, which is again another event, and you can see it's, it's a pan Arab project, designs for Khaled Hijazi, Kamal Kaaba, Ismail Shamoud, the designers from the whole Arab world using one of the events, which is again uh, um, the Day of the Land to design uh, for the Palestinian cause. And lastly, illustration by Abdul Rahman Al Mizian and showing um, the, I would say, inspired by Burhan Kai Kutli. Abd Ahmad Muslim is a Palestinian uh, artist and, and designer using the, the female figure with the Palestinian customs again for uh, uh, for resistance using griffle but at the same time you have the doves you have the homes and uh, there's actually 30 post 30 from from uh, from those posters and there uh, I chose only three to show it to, to you uh, logo design, which uh, related to the Palestinian code, which is the Palestinian Liberation Organization logo, 1964, by Ismail Shamut. And uh, it's not really a logo, it's, it's the, 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 the elements that are really a lot is the flag, the map, the flame, the name, the sun, it's a lot, but that at that time that was very, very expressive in, in for, the, for the cause. And in the middle is the Fatah, the Movement and Political Party in, in Palestine by Naim Ismail, 1965. And you can see that's the logo showing again the riffle and the Palestinian map. The, in the middle is the storm, which is Al-Asifa. And you can see our slogan of, 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 the, of the resistance. And lastly, the logo of the Popular Front of the Liberation of Palestine by Palestinian uh, Vladimir Tamarai, 1969. Which for the one, the actually can read Arabic. This is the letter Jim, which is show like Al Gabha, the front, which the arrow going to the map of Palestine. That's the right to return. As the old Palestinians in exile, they will go back again home to Palestine. That's what we show you. Um, jump quickly to the uh, fourth topic, uh, which is the Zionists in the diaspora. I will highlight a few of them. I start from diaspora in, in Sudan, Hassan Musa, who was born in 1951, a beautiful artist and designer that first um, designs he did, and it's, it's actually um, from the early 70s, uh, 70s that uh, the magazine called Johannam, which is the hill, and that was actually a guerrilla magazine, a way of like designing a layout for a magazine called the hill, um, mimicking the logo of Coca-Cola, because they would say at that time, uh, um, like America is a devil and whoever is signed of, of capitalism uh, as the Coca-Cola, then it's actually hell. So he's mocking this by designing the word, the hell, Guhannam, as the logo of Coca-Cola. And this this ma beautiful magazine, uh, it's called the Khartoum, which is, um, uh, the capital of Sudan, and um, he, he was using this copying ten copies of of uh, Johannam the magazine and give it to friends and they photocopy it again and make a Xerox of it and then send it to other and that's the way how he distributed it. And uh, his work in the 70s and 80s in Sudan was beautifully like the book cover design to the right, uh, two stories from Khalida Dimna, which is stories of animal using a beautiful calligraphic style to illustrate. Uh, um, to make illustrations. And I will show you some of, of the other work and here his work again in, in Sudan, a book cover about, um, and that's in the seventies, if you've been in Sudan or know about the political system in Sudan, you see it's impossible to design a cover with, with a nude figure in, in, in Arab world in Sudan, especially at that time, but he did it and that was in the seventies. And then uh, this is some of the illustrations from the same book, beautiful illustrations. And then he left uh, uh, 
Sudan and, and moved to France, and especially to Marseille, to the south of France. And he uh, uh, actually established with his wife uh, a, a publishing house, and he did beautifully use a big calligraphic style to illustrate. Uh, and this is the one that's called the Al Alphabet du Shahrazad, which is the alphabet of Shahrazad, if you know about the story of Shahrazad, using the female figures to write the Arabic alphabets, like the Winnie nine letters of the Arabic alphabets. If you want to find them online, it's Grandier. That's the name of the publishing house. You will find them. Uh, unfortunately, they are all in French. And then we will move from Sudan, giving some other examples of the Iraqi designers in diaspora. And we have here one of the, uh, uh, um, the early uh, people like from the private sector worked in, in the industry of, of publishing and graphic design, which is not the Ramsey, he was known also as an artist, uh, uh, a photographer and uh, a great publisher. So um, as you remember, and I've said like that some of the, the Nazamdi was used to go to Next, actually, in his office in Baghdad at that time, he was used to go and to the Baghdad Fine Arts School, see the fresh graduates, which you, I will show the work now after the work of Nazim Ramzi and commissioning them to work in, in his uh, print house, which is called actually Ramzi, very famous print house in Baghdad in the 50s and 60s. And, uh, uh, and uh, he, because there was not really design education in, in Baghdad at that time, but he created his own school in the Ramzi uh, print house. So to train young designers and young artists to do uh, editorial design mostly. But he was also a big fan of type design. So that's some of the type designs, he did designs for his publications. And that's some of the magazine he uh, founded with many of the Iraqi artists I will mention later, which is Funun Arabiya. Uh, Arab uh, Arts and Afaq and Arabia, Arab Horizons, and those uh, some of the examples. From the people I mentioned before is the great Hashim Samarji that he lives at the moment in London. I mean, I'm, uh, um, uh, he lived uh, uh, Iraq in, in, in the late 70s, early 80s, and he did, before he left, I will show some of his beautiful work in Iraq at that time, and mostly with Nazim Ramzi in his publishing, uh, and sorry, in his printing press. But again, he was very fond of, of the Arabic uh, lettering. So that's a sketch to the right side. And then that's the final work to the left side. It's a poetry for uh, Abdul Wahab al-Bayati. Uh, he designed the logo to the left side for the first Biennale of Arab uh, art. And that's the, uh, also the poster that was in Baghdad in 1973. And some of the his posters uh, in for the Baghdad uh, International Fair using the little bat uh, and uh, using it as a pattern to design the poster for the, the fair itself. Uh, another one for the, um, the, 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 the association for, general association for uh, radio, television and cinema of Iraq and uh, the welcome the battle of, of fate. That's a design as well. Uh, for uh, the wars in Iraq at that time in, in the um, 70s. And then Baghdad itself, uh, which is for the Ministry of Information in Baghdad, it's a festival called Al-Wasti, Al which is a poetry festival, and it was 1972. Same generation, Yahya Sheikh, which is at the moment in Trondheim in Norway, and there is also a beautiful artist and designer and educator as well. That's some of his early designs in Iraq. Um, that's for the Palestinian cause. Uh, again, a bit of mem uh, festival in the Mosul in Iraq in 1971. Uh, Wasti festival again in Iraq in 1972 for the information commissioned by the information ministry in, in Iraq. Um, Jawadat Hasib, same, that's an image for him in his young age in, in, in front of the uh, Iraqi Arts Association. And uh, Jawad Hasib at the moment, he lives in Spain. And those are some of the beautiful uh, posters of Jawad Hasib for the Association of Iraqi uh, Plastic Arts, which are visual arts. And that was an exhibition in Damascus. Uh, the first Arab Biennale, another posters for, for the Biennale in Baghdad in 1973. And the third one is, is an, an Iraqi art exhibition, contemporary Iraqi art exhibition in, in Kuwait. And the beautiful Rafa and Nasri, uh, God bless his soul. He passed away in, uh, um, eight years ago in, in Amman, in Jordan. 
and um, some of the beautiful work for uh, uh, Nasser Rafai. It's a book cover, uh, a poster uh, for the Lwasti Festival, poster for Jerusalem 1979. That was a part of a touring uh, poster design uh, exhibition in solidarity with Palestine. And the third is actually about uh, modern Iraqi art in, uh, uh, by Jabra, Ibrahim Jabra. Uh, it's a beautiful book documenting the Iraqi modern art. Some of his sketches. And that's actually the logo of his studio, graphic studio. Book cover designs for his beautiful uh, uh, author, May Mudaffar. And Muhammad Saeed Sakkar, and then Iraqi was also in exile, and he was a type designer. Um, and the, he was one of the most important figures that they tried to simplify the way how Arabic was written. So the right side, that's some of the uh, font designs by him. And uh, to the left side, that's actually a methodology of uh, simplifying and uh, uh, the, the way how Arabic is, uh, is written. Um, as you know, it's, it's very, um, Arabic letters are um, connected together and it's, uh, they have a, a lots of variations and as well, they have a lots of also of ligatures. So he tried to simplify them uh, and finding a way that can make it easy to make the, the printing blocks easier. Uh, but unfortunately, he was so much accused of his way of, of, um, of, of um, simplifying Arabic letter that was even accused as a spy because the simplification looks like Hebrew. So he was prisoned and he was in exile for a while. Uh, the Great Dial Azawi, which is the living archive of Iraqi art and design. And he, at the moment, lives in, in London. Those some beautiful posters for him. I'll go again very quickly because I think uh, time is running. So those to left to right, it's uh, uh, um, um, an exhibition for uh, uh, Rafa Nasiri, uh, Salah al Jumayi, Dial Al Azawi, and those are three of designers. Uh, and himself he designed the book, uh, sorry, the, the poster. Secondly is a poster against, uh, it's called actually Artist Against Racism. It's just in solidarity for uh, against racism movement around the world. And then um, to the uh, right side, it's again in solidarity with Palestine, which is again, as I mentioned before, the international exhibition touring uh, Europe and the Arab world. And some of the early posters of uh, Diyar al Azawi, Baghdad Fair, 1965, beautiful illustrational style. Also, he was uh, fond of lettering. So that's a personal solo exhibition poster design, al Azawi, that's his name. And that's for um, a poster for al Wasti Festival, a poetry we're using only lettering for uh, the, the poster design. Uh, book cover designs. And he also published the first graphic design book uh, in Arabic. It's called actually um, the poster uh, art in Iraq. And that was from 1938 to 1972. Um, move to the fifth subject, maybe. I know it's, I will go quickly. So it's about design and post-socialism and in the Arab world, especially again in, in um, uh, we go for one of the very few names that we uh, will go through the book because I know that's really also a question being asked before several times about the female designers. So one of the very early female designers, which we finally found some names and some examples, and we are looking for more names and more examples, is Mariam Abdel Alim. She's an Egyptian, uh, graduated from the Fine Arts School in Cairo. She traveled to the uh, to the U.S. to especially to the university to California to the University of uh, USC to do a, an MFA in in uh, design. She came back uh, to Egypt. She founded the printmaking, which she called actually the graphic art department in the Fine Art School in Alexandria, and uh, she is one of the pioneer uh, artists and design female arts and designers in in Egypt. And uh, I will show you some of the very few design, which is a trial of the Alexandria Biennale for Mediterranean art. So it's the city of Alexandria in Egypt. They, they have the second oldest 
Biennale in, in the world, which is Alexandria Biennale, and that was the design for the 16th edition of, of the Biennale. There are different trials on, on colors and material for the designs. Uh, Nagy Shekel, um, 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 a designer, uh, and a puppet designer, a um, uh, theater director, um, an artist as well, an educator for the Fine Arts School, and he shows some of the covers for the same magazine, Sabah Al Khair, Good Morning, that's his early work in the 50s, uh, illustrations for the books that he designed for children. Uh, one of the famous ones, a memoir of a horse, a beautiful layout breaking all kinds of breads, and uh, designed for cinema as well, why Alexandria Y with the, with the Egyptian director Yusuf Shaheen. Um, Hamad Hidji was controversial work and you see, you see that his beautiful book left to right which is uh, representing the, um, um, the military march from the way how they move legs right left right left and so that was actually a very controversial book published only with a limited edition in Tunisia and when he tried to publish it again in Egypt it was actually banned from from publishing it again and uh, I will show you why you see some of the illustration which criticize him so much all um, militant regimes or systems, and also with some religious symbols, nudity, and many other controversial topics in the Arab world that, that, that day, and until today, actually, because the book is still <laughs> actually forbidden to be published. Um, but that's the beautiful work of, of Muhammad Hedji. Um, some of his uh, book cover designs, um, some of posters actually for Palestine as well, by Mohammed Hedji. You can see the, the Palestinian Kufiya making connection between Zionism and Nazism and the, the, the Palestinian children as well. A beautiful book design for the Arab, uh, Arabic public, uh, the Arab publisher. The magazine was published by the Arab League in, in Tunisia for 10 years, which is mostly about Arab publishing industry. He used a lot of beautiful lettering and uh, calligraphic style in only his design, Sami Rafa. Uh, with his Kufic inspiration with this um, uh, memorial in Egypt for the martyr of the war of 1973. Uh, and, and you see he used the name of all uh, martyrs in Kufic script to create this memorial in the, in the middle of, of the city of Cairo. Uh, the logo of Cairo uh, itself, the state, uh, some other logos for institutions in, in Egypt. And he also designed the, the murals, I would say, for the, the metro, the subway of Cairo, the city, second line. So all the design is made by Samuel Alpha. Some of the sketches for the design, one day made it in Cairo, you will see his work. Ahmed Morsi as well, is a poet and artist and the designer. And you can see some of the uh, founded magazine, Gallery 68, a very political content. Actually, he lived at the moment in New York and he's still working as an artist, but he's not uh, designing anymore. And that's some of his uh, designs. And move to Morocco is Mohammed Al Milehi, and his beautiful design. Mohammed Al Milehi is an artist and a designer himself. That's uh, one of the beautiful work of Mohammed Al Milehi. It's an exhibition for the um, the teleology. Uh, sorry, the Mohammed Shabaa, Mohammed uh, Farid Bil Kahia, Mohammed Al Milehi. That's the door those three names that the, uh, one of the very important names in the Moroccan modern art, that they founded the Casablanca School. It's an art movement, an art school, and a design school itself. So that's a poster actually collected by the MoMA in New York for the work of, of Emilehi as a designer. And that's some of the magazine covers and the poster uh, design for uh, Mohammed Emilehi. Some uh, logos by design by Mohammed Emilehi as well. Um, Ain, which is I, Another, uh, it's a gallery for modern art and uh, some other commercial uh, logos as well. Uh, Soufflis, which is called Amfas, it's a, a political magazine, again, designed by Mohammed Milehi that he worked with uh, Shaba and Bilkahia for, for this magazine. Um, another uh, catalog design by Mohammed Milehi and from Egypt, Helmi Tuni. Quickly cover designs by Helmut Tuni's early work with uh, 
figurative illustrations, a way of littering, and then moved to Book Seed with Darish Shalou. It's a publishing house in Cairo. Uh, beautiful illustrations for children inspired by uh, folk stories and, and uh, in Egypt and the Arab world. And you see how he's inspired by the Islamic uh, manuscripts, the way how he uses um, calligraphic styles, the way how he uses patterns and, and even these vibrant colors. Uh, posters for uh, Arab theater, and that was in the 70s, only based on littering and inspired by the um, uh, miniatures drawings, in, uh, and you can see in the middle, uh, the famous uh, newspapers uh, in, in Lebanon, Al Safir, the ambassador, he was the designer of the logo and the masthead of Safir, which unfortunately uh, stopped at the moment. Moving to Syria, uh, Abdel Qadr al Naoud, beautiful designs only with Arabic language. So, those are some of the designs. Uh, one is the uh, Arab, uh, Arab translation uh, conference to the left, and how uh, the translation from Latin letters to Arabic letters goes down. Uh, that's the um, Folk Art Week, uh, first Folk Art Week in, in Damascus in Syria. Designs plenty of the uh, of, of posters for the, the international fair in Damascus, like around like, I think forty editions, something like that. Also very important that he designs the the, um, the Mediterranean games used cuneiform as element of design for the pictograms of the um, for the for the for the for the uh, for the games in in the Mediterranean basin. Just one second. Oh, some of his, uh, again, littering style, which is everybody knows in Syria, that's the style of Abdul Qadr al Naoud, designed for culture mostly, art exhibitions and uh, museums. Plays uh, for the theater. And then uh, the, the bookmaker from Egypt, Mohideen al Labad. First design he did, and he is the age of actually 19, commissioned by the first, the pioneer Bikar, to give him, if you remember the, the magazine Sinbad, that he gave them actually the freedom to design some of the covers for Sinbad when he was in the age of 19. And that was like uh, finding in him the talent that he would be a great designer in the future. So. If you saw those cover of Sindhabad, you know that's the 19 years old, the Labad designs. Some of the posters for the state, which is mostly for the book fair in Egypt, also children's book fair in Egypt. Some educational poster was the Arabic letters, Arabic uh, like alphabet, and also uh, numbers. Uh, books, educational book for educational books for uh, Dar al Fatal Arabi, which is a very important Palestinian publishing house, was based in Beirut, which again. Mentioning schools, Dar Fatal Abi was a school by itself, the publishing house, and uh, Dar Fatal Abi it actually um, are, um, I would say, youth or um, publishing house, and uh, which is educational books for kids uh, from the whole Arab region about Arabic culture, Arabic revolution, uh, Arab revolution, Palestinian cause, uh, letters and numbers, plenty of publication. Those are some of the publications from. Labad, which actually for the Dar al Fatal Arabi. Um, some of them, he wrote the content himself, some others he just only illustrated, and he was actually the art director for the, for the whole uh, uh, publishing house, commissioning also artists and designers from the whole Arab world. Uh, as I'm, we, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we're, we're running out of time a little bit if we want to still. Um, go over some questions. So if you'd like to take two more minutes or if we can also just dive into the, the q and I will just finish the topic and then we're not necessary to go through the last. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, Thank so, you. Yeah, so sorry for, for just taking long. I mean, I, I, it's a more than two years of research. So to sum them up in, in a very short time is very difficult. So some of the beautiful designs, again, by the bed inspired by Manuscript, uh, Islamic manuscripts, as the book from Nil Wasti, uh, the one in the middle, or uh, folk uh, 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 tales uh, from to the left side, and uh, uh, as well, 
uh, a book cover design for Fuad Zakaria. And um, maybe if you don't mind, I'll just go through the images. I'm not gonna say anything just to make it quickly that people can enjoy visuals since most people will enjoy visual. Najah Mahdawi from Tunisia, beautiful way of using Arabic calligraphy. We don't mostly using it as an artworks, but he, from our perspective that we see them as designs. And that's from the seventies until nowadays of his work as an artwork, but also uh, uh, applied in airplanes as golf air, mosque facades, uh, fashion, Rashid Qureshi from Algeria, using uh, also in textile, the way of using Arabic glitters on textile. And from Egypt, chant, uh, um, the Armenian Egyptian chant uh, Avadizian, using um, the way of, of, of graphical treatment as stenciling and uh, monochromatic colors to uh, 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 make artworks. And even the process of how we take magazine covers and transfer them to uh, artworks, as you can see here, the topics uh, in, in Egypt from 50s and 60s. And lastly, from, from Tunisia, uh, Najib Bil Khawja with, with his beautiful uh, architecture construct, uh, uh, constructivism. And you can see the graphical treatment of his artworks that actually looks like designs. And I will end it here. Thank you again. And please accept my apologies if it's too long and I need a sip of water. And here I'm open for all questions. Oh my gosh. Well, please do not apologize for compiling such an important part of our history. Um, and we're so honored that you even were able to fit this much in, in only a very short hour. Everyone in the chat has been freaking out. Um, <laughs> so thank, thank you so much. And if anything, we're sorry we can't sit here for another six hours um, learning from you and, and absorbing the beauty of all of the art that you shared with us. Um, so I think we can start with this question from Sila Foster. They're asking, how do you believe that modern art illustration and design can aid in the Palestinian struggle today? That's a very uh, beautiful question. I wish I could give a definitive answer. I will just give my interpretation. Because as you can see, Palestinian cause, as I mentioned in my presentation, it's a, it's a pan or a cause. And, uh, and um, honestly speaking, I don't really see it as a pan or a cause. It's a pan human cause. I mean, it's a cause of, of, of human beings, not really for Arabs. And you can see the contribution from Morocco till Iraq, from Mohammed al Malihi in Morocco to Diyar al Azawi in, in Iraq, in Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, and Egypt, and Sudan, everybody contributed to show the world in, in, in visual language. Uh, because again, you can see that the tools that we have today is much, much, much uh, faster and more developed as the posters that you saw in my presentation. But always, as you know, an image is more powerful than a word. That's, that's uh, something we learned in all design schools. So making illustrations uh, that show, uh, and I would say designs, I'm gonna say the illustration, but making designs that show um, and uh, show the world what's happening now in, 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 in Palestine, it's very powerful and very strong as a visual language to convey a message very quick and it will spread like, like hell. You can see the posters of, of Burhan Kakutli I mentioned before with the lady having the rifle in, in her background with the Palestinian customs. It's all over now in the whole Arab world. See Instagram and Facebook, you will find it. So, I mean, of course, if the, if the social media allow us to use this, but there is alternatives. So I would say, use the power of image, the power of design to spread ideas, to show the world what's happening through designs. They did it in a printed media as posters in an exhibition touring all over the Arab world and actually no, all over the world. And now we can do it using uh, the, the virtual world as well. Thank you. I, I deeply echo that. I think that also we're already seeing so many artists make designs right now that are being widely shared on social media and it's raising the collective consciousness on what's going on. So definitely design has such a big role. Um, there's an anonymous question that's asking if you can talk a little bit more 
about why these design languages were neglected and by whom were they neglected? Um, neglected by historians, as, as we all know. I mean, uh, at, for a certain moment, I mean, with change of civilization, who writes the history is the one who dominate the history. So if you talk about history of modern design or modern art, it's of course dominated by the West. So if you see the 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 all history, like I have them here in the background, all the history books that actually talk about the history of graphic design, you will see Swiss, German, British, American. Sometimes you can see really very early designs from Japan or China, uh, but very difficult when you find an Arab or African or actually. I would say even uh, South American design and written in, in, in the history books. So who, who writes the history books is the one who wants to write the history books. Is the one they have the ability to write, they have the language, they have the tools, they have the funding, they have the power of doing it. So um, two, two different stories that I will mention very quickly that happened to me um, personally. Uh, before writing the book with Bahia. So I was in, in China, I was in Hong Kong. I was teaching graphic design. Part of my teaching was history of graphic design. So I was responsible for teaching history of graphic design in general. And one of my colleagues was teaching history of the Asian graphic design. So I was teaching Swiss graphic design, German graphic design, and many others. And she was teaching actually uh, design from Asia, especially China and Japan. I was a complete ignorant. So I noticed that how history that I learned, which I'm an Egyptian, I educated in Switzerland and the UK, it was only focused on the Western graphic design. So the mags and many other uh, history reference like history books, they only focus on, on the Western ones. Similarly, I was in Brazil. I was not, normally I go to a bookstore, try to buy lo local books from in design and art. And I found a beautiful book uh, somewhere here. So, I mean, it's around 500 pages of Brazilian graphic design from 1900 to 2000. And all the names inside, none of them were included in history books that I, I was actually teaching or I have in my, in my library. So we, we felt the need that that needs to be changed. We need to rewrite the history. We need to collect it and show the world that there is other alternative stories need to be told. That's. From, from my point of view, actually, Mike Bahia as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asmeen. Thank you, everyone, for really listening. I am sure, I'm really sorry that I didn't have the time to look at the chat or myself, but I, I hope I can actually see it later. It was really great speaking to you guys. I hope that you, uh, that I, I would not say learn, but I would just share with you something really interesting, and there is much more to learn. And uh, Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Yasmin. Uh, thank you, Slow Factory Foundation. Thank you for Open Education Platform. Great idea. And have a lovely evening or morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.